Hey everyone, today on the bench we have the E-Flight F-16 Thunderbird. This is the 70mm EDF version. Uh, if you remember my previous unboxing F-16 video was on the 64mm. This is the 70mm, so it's a bigger, more powerful F-16. And it comes painted in the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds Air Show Demonstration Team colors, which is just an all-time iconic paint scheme, both that and the Blue Angels easily identifiable anywhere as just being a classic, classic scheme. So uh, E-Flight has taken that gorgeous scheme and applied it to this um, F-16 here, and we're gonna go ahead and get it out of the box. So just a couple highlights here uh, to start with. We mentioned before it's a 70 millimeter EDF, so it's a 70 millimeter fan. It runs on uh, 6S power, unlike the 64 millimeter, which is 3S and 4S. It does come with uh, AS, 3X, and Safe Select if you buy the, the bind and fly uh, version. And it also includes uh, retractable landing gear, which is something that the 64 millimeter does not have. And what's nice is this particular model does not have uh, flaps. So if you're running a DX6 like I am, you can have Safe Select and the retracts uh, because you don't need to have an extra open channel for uh, the flaps like I do with like my P51 or Corsair or any of the uh, classic Warbirds. So, um, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing out of the box here and then kind of compare it a little bit to the um, to the 64 millimeter F16 that I recently unboxed and put together. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. All right, well, we got the uh, the main box uh, taken off. So now we're down to the uh, the styrofoam packaging and you can start to see the aircraft now coming together inside the uh, the box here. Uh, similar to the uh, the 64 millimeter, we have the uh, the fuselage, we have the uh, the vertical uh, stimulator, and then we have the um, the two sections of the wing. And I imagine somewhere buried in here is going to be the horizontal stimulator. It looks very similar to like just a scaled up version of the 64 millimeter, uh, just in the way that um, it kind of goes together. But we're going to go ahead and uh, take each one of the pieces out and kind of review them and uh, kind of show them off, and then we'll uh, we'll kind of get everything out here and and take a look at what we have here inside the box. All right. All right, so one of the first steps is to go ahead and uh, remove these uh, kind of foam uh, protector pieces here, and these kind of just keep everything situated inside the box. Just go ahead and set these off to the side. And one of the first pieces that comes out of the box is the, um, is the wing halves here. So the national insignia is already installed, uh, along with the, uh, the red, white, and blue stripes, and the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the Thunderbird livery here as well. And these come all pre-installed right here from the factory. The uh, national insignia is a uh, decal and this area here, the uh, the blue and the red is uh, painted on. The area down here that's the Thunderbird logo is painted on as well, but they actually use white um, decal here to kind of separate the uh, the feathers of the, uh, the Thunderbird logo on the bottom. Uh, otherwise, uh, you don't get uh, all the um, the um, locations to put the uh, the weapon stores like you would on the uh, the 64 millimeter F-16. Uh, of course, being an air show demonstration unit, uh, they're not going to fly with uh, all the ordnance and everything on. Even though that the Thunderbird F-16s um, can be called into active duty for combat if needed. In fact, there's actually an exercise in which they they take one of the Air Force Thunderbird F-16s and they completely convert it over to uh, combat readiness, including a, uh, a repaint and uh, get it ready to go and then uh, kind of undo that entire thing and put it back to the, uh, to the Thunderbird uh, colors. So uh, the aileron servo is already pre-installed. Here is the, uh, the wire sticking out uh, to install that. So unlike the 64 millimeter, which has the aileron servo mounted on the fuselage, this one has it here mounted right on the, uh, right on the wing. And of course, as I mentioned before, there's no, there's no flaps uh, on this at all. It's just a uh, one single uh, aileron piece. Okay, we'll move that out of the way. Uh, the other wing is exactly the same, except for it says U.S. Air Force on, uh, on it instead of the national insignia. And of course, that's a decal and everything else is painted. Um, really nothing too surprising on this. It's just the, uh, the other hand version of the, of the wing. Okay, here we have the, uh, the flight manual here for the, uh, the Thunderbird 70mm uh, F-16. Uh, it's a pretty thick uh, manual. But once again, it's got all the different languages in it. So... Uh, it's always important to uh, review this when uh, it comes time to assemble the aircraft and then also get it ready to fly. Okay, moving uh, next here, we have the, um, these are the, uh, the ventral fins. 
They are pre-painted pre uh, dark blue with uh, white decal on them. And these are the fins that go um, underneath the, um, the fuselage right over by the, uh, where the engine sits and they kind of sit down at, uh, at an angle. Next up, we have the, uh, the vertical stabulator. And if you notice, the, uh, all the little star emblems are not on there. And that's because the stars, along with the, um, the numbers for which Thunderbird you want to make, um, are actually a separate decal sheet. So you can make any one of the uh, U.S. Air Force uh, single-seat Thunderbirds. I think they have one that's a, uh, a two-seat, uh, uh, kind of the one they give the rides to uh, celebrities, and you see it, the one that the uh, like people from like the, the news anchors and stuff get a ride in. That's the, uh, the dual-seat S-16, but the rest of them are all single-seats. So you can build whatever uh, F-16 you want that comes in a, a decal sheet that is included in here and that also includes the stars that go up on the uh, on the tail as well. Uh, unlike the 64 millimeter, uh, this one does include a functioning rudder where the 64 millimeter F-16, there is no rudder on it at all, but the uh, the shape is exactly the same. It's a uh, glued in piece, but uh, this one here does include a rudder. And something else to note, uh, these actually have really nice ball end links um, on all the uh, the servos. Uh, much better than like the um, kind of the pinch together style that I have on the 64 millimeter. These have really nice high quality uh, ball links on here and as well as pre-installed um, servos. And then the, uh, the wire for the, uh, the rudder servo sticks down below and that will plug into the, uh, the fuselage. Okay, move that out of the way. Uh, next up we have the, uh, the nose cone uh, and the alpha probe that uh, sticks out the, uh, the front here. In fact, this the Alpha Probe is actually quite uh, flexible, which is surprising. It is not on the um, on the 64 millimeter. It's it's a hard piece of uh, plastic and it's pretty fragile. But uh, you can see this here is actually flexible. This forward section here is a uh, kind of a soft rubber, and I think that's an this this really this is an awesome idea. Because I'll tell you what, I with a 64 millimeter F16, I bump that Alpha Probe on everything. Um, it's easy to knock it off, easy to bump it when you're transporting. I mean, it is really uh, a delicate uh, piece of the aircraft. And on the 70 millimeter, instead of that hard plastic, it's a uh, piece of uh, foam here that allows it to, uh, to move around. Um, however, note, if you're gonna be repainting your F-16, um, you're gonna wanna be aware that uh, as the paint flexes, uh, you could get some chipping on the, uh, on the nose cone here. And so we'll have to think about that a little bit further because I wasn't aware that that is actually a uh, kind of a soft rubber. Otherwise, it's a magnetic nose with just like the 64 millimeter S16. So this will pop onto the, the, uh, the front of the fuselage. Uh, also, you can remove it for, uh, for transporting, which is fantastic because I'll tell you what, um, it makes the airplane a little bit small, a little bit more manageable if you can just take this nose cone right off. Plus, if you have a really hard landing or something happens, the nose cone is replaceable, which I think is also really great because uh, you know, mishaps happen. <laughs> you know, you, uh, you either go too far off the edge of the runway or you bump it or things happen. So it's nice that this is a removable piece and it's held down with a magnet so you could always replace it if you need to. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, we got a few more pieces here. I'll be, ser I'll be honest here with the, uh, the white foam in the white foam airplane. It can be a little tough to find all the pieces, but the, um, the horizontal stabulator are in this uh, little pocket up here in the side of the box by the uh, canopy. And these um, have the pre-painted red, white, and blue um, stripes on them. These glue into place just like they do on the, um, on the 64 millimeter S16. So you wanna make sure that you have, um, you know, either some sort of a CA glue or foam tack or something else to, uh, to adhere the horizontal and vertical stabulators. And as well, and they also have the, uh, the ball end link on here as well. So really nice, uh, high quality features here. Um, that you're gonna get as you kind of step up into more of a um, kind of a nicer quality, nicer grade F-16 here in the 70 millimeter than you do with the, uh, I guess I consider more of an entry level 64 millimeter. This is a step up in price, but there's a huge amount of extra quality, uh, just nicer pieces, nicer everything when you get moving into the 70 millimeter F-16 versus the smaller 64 millimeter. This isn't something that I consider to be like an entry level, uh, your first EDF or anything like that. So a little bit more advanced, a little bit more money, but it's a lot nicer of an F-16 as well. So you definitely get uh, uh, what you pay for here. And it's, I'll tell you what, um, already I can tell you that uh, it is a really a beautiful looking aircraft. Um, and speaking of that, let's go ahead and get the fuselage out so you guys can see uh, what I'm looking at, which is the last piece of the, um, 
the puzzle here, uh, at least on this side, there is a, um, there's, I won't get it out, it's taped in on the bottom here right now. The wing spar uh, that you'll need to install when you put the wings and the fuselage together, the wing spar is on the back side of the uh, box here. It is actually uh, taped into place. I'm just gonna leave that there for right now. But just so you know that that is under there, so when you go to assemble the aircraft, you can't find the wing spar. It's on the bottom of the box, taped into place, and you're gonna wanna make sure that is installed when you go to put the wings on. Well, let's go ahead and get the, um, get the fuselage out here, shall we? We got a few more odds and ends to get out um, as well. I'm just gonna put these off to the side. Okay. Actually, you know what? Before we move the fuselage out, because I got a few other small pieces, we're gonna get those out first. Um, they're kind of hidden a little bit in here as you start to move things around. Uh, you got to start to find more pieces. Uh, here we have the um, the missiles for the uh, the wings as well as the uh, launcher rail. This one's stuck in there actually pretty good. I'm trying to fish it out here without damaging the uh, the fins. Oh, there we go. So we have, um, these are not the uh, Sidewinder missiles. I, I don't remember exactly which ones these are. These are like kind of a more advanced set of air-to-air uh, -air missiles than the, uh, the Sidewinder, a newer style missile. These are a lot longer and a little bit larger diameter than the, uh, the Sidewinders. And these actually clip into the, um, the edges of the wing, which is great because on the 64 millimeter, they have to be glued into place. Uh, so here you could install them or take them back off again. So from a static display or if you just want to try to mate in the aircraft and you want to take all these things off, uh, these just clip into place and then clip right back out again. Really, really cool feature that is on the 70 millimeter S16 that you don't get with the 64 millimeter. Okay, so move those out of the way. Uh, check out the little, little pockets in here just to see if there's anything else I am missing. Uh, yep, we have bag of hardware. Go ahead and get... Uh, get those out here. Uh, so here is the hardware. We have a bind plug. We have the um, control rods here for the, the horizontal stabulator and elevator assembly. We also have some screws to hold the wings in. They use, um, looks like we have, they're the kind of the hex head screws that go into play here. I think there's, yep, there are four of them. One was hidden there. So there, there is your little bag of hardware. And with that, I think we can go ahead and finally get the fuselage out of the box here. All right, so here is the fuselage, and I'm gonna go ahead and move this packaging box out of the way here so we can get some more room here. <laughs> wow, this thing is uh, this thing is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this is the first time I've seen the um, the 70 millimeter uh, F16 in person, and I gotta say, this is this thing is really really nice. Uh, all the panel lines are. Um, are molded in to the um, fuselage here. And the panel lines on this are look way more scale crack than they do on the 64 millimeter. It doesn't have those big trenches of panel lines that are in there. The, everything is uh, very crisp, uh, not very deep at all. So they're nice and shallow, but they're, uh, they are most certainly all there. And they look just, just outstanding. The quality of the, uh, of the fuselage here is just so, so nice. Uh, decals pre-installed. You have the United States Air Force, the national insignia, and then you have all the country flags of all the places that the U.S. Air Force uh, Thunderbirds have um, performed. We have the uh, the gun port here for the uh, for the air to air air to ground uh, cannon. Uh, the tail cone here is actually molded uh, plastic and painted silver and, and black, and that looks just beautiful on the. Um, 64 millimeter, I had to hand paint all that. It's just a solid piece of foam. This is a beautiful hard plastic uh, tail cone on here or jet exhaust and nozzle. If we look down inside here, we can see the EDF unit. Um, real nice 70 millimeter unit. This thing, I'll, I'll be honest, this thing is a prime candidate for one of those uh, LED afterburners shoved in the back here to light up when you hit uh, full throttle. Uh, make it look like you got the afterburner going. I uh, got some extra uh, vents up here on the top surface here for the uh, EDF unit. There's also quite a bit of um, vents down on the bottom here. Uh, really, this, this whole section here is all open to feed that big EDF unit uh, that sits back here. You know, it has the front nose uh, or the front intake up here by the nose, but you also have all the retract housing that sits in here as well. So that kind of blocks some of the airflow. So the majority of the airflow for the EDF unit actually comes from this section uh, back here. Uh, retracts are pre-installed. You got the um, the main landing gear and the nose gear retract already in here. Beautiful um, 
it looks like aluminum construction with uh, oleo struts uh, front and rear uh, boy that's a uh, beautiful beautiful workmanship this is trying to bring it up here you guys can take a look in inside here and just see what's on the bottom of the aircraft as the uh, landing gear are in the retracted uh, position at this point in time and everything I tell you is just it really really looks good the, the quality like I said before the quality of this aircraft is just light years beyond um, like the old Rock Hobby uh, FMS uh, E-Flight 64 millimeter um, F-16. It's just, you really notice it when you look, step up into an airframe of this size, that there's just, there's so much more attention to detail, uh, so many little features around the aircraft. They're able to do so much more in an aircraft of this size that you just can't do in a smaller aircraft. Uh, even has the arresting hook on the back here, and that's used if uh, when they do engine tests, they actually will arrest the aircraft on the ground with a tail hook and run the engine up and they have that uh, actually molded into the, um, the fuselage as well. We have the servos installed here for the, um, for the elevators. They are pre-installed and, and wired in. So that's all done. Um, let's see, otherwise, um, yeah, not much else on the bottom here other than a, there is just a lot, of, uh, a lot of fan blades and air intakes going on in here. That's, uh, this is the biggest uh, EDF unit that I've ever seen, just looking down inside here at that, uh, all those fans in there. The, um, the aircraft is just, it's really, really impressive uh, when you finally get a chance to see one in person as, as I'm seeing it for the, for the first time today. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, um, uh, actually, you know what, before we get on to the, doing a little compare and contrasting here, I'm gonna pop open the, uh, the canopy. And to do that, there's a, there's a release uh, lever back here, and this just pops right off. So the canopy comes off here. Let's go ahead and show you the, um, we have the battery tray. It's a uh, balsa wood or ply construction with, uh, with Velcro and really nice high quality uh, Velcro straps. It's got the uh, AR636B uh, receiver already pre-installed. It's uh, pre-programmed with AS3X. Um, you can bind it with um, Safe Select. Uh, it's got a, uh, what appears to be an EC, uh, yeah, that's an EC5 connector here for the 6S power plant. It's already uh, in here, but yeah, uh, plenty of room for, a, uh, for your 6S battery. I, I think they give you a range of, um, I'll have to double check. I think it's like 3,300 to maybe 5,000, maybe not quite that big, but it's a good size um, 6S battery will fit in here. And there looks to be plenty of room to be able to set that in here to get your uh, center of gravity set. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my um, grab my 64 millimeter S16. We can do a, do a little size comparison here real quick, all right? So hold on a second. I'm gonna kind of position this so we can see the fuselage a little bit better. All right, so here is my 64 millimeter E-Flight F16 that is currently uh, undergoing some paint work. In fact, you see I got the Alpha probe already taken off. The uh, Sidewinder missiles are taken off here. I'm saying it's, it's going through some work right now, so it's not 100% uh, ready to go. Well, let's just kind of show you, this is the, uh, the size difference you get. I got the uh, tail cones pretty much uh, lined up right now. And the nose of the uh, 64 millimeters about equal with the, um, with the helmet of the, uh, the pilot of the 70 millimeters. So there is, there's quite a bit of size difference really between these two models. You say, well, 64 millimeter versus 70 millimeter, that's, that's not, that, not that big. Well, in reality, there is a pretty large size difference between these two aircraft. And as I pointed out before, there's quite a bit of a more scale detail, more refinement uh, with the 70 millimeter than you'd get with the 64 millimeter. This one's a little bit more money, but it comes with a lot more detail, a lot more features. You don't get retracts on something like this. You don't get as powerful of a motor. You don't get the nice um, plastic uh, tail cone on here. I had, a, I had, like I said, I had a paint mine. You don't get a rudder. Um, so there's quite a bit of difference between these two airframes, and that really helps kind of explain why if you're in the market for one, you want an entry level aircraft, you look more towards the 64 millimeter. If you're a beginner, just starting out on different EDFs and you want to kind of get into the EDF uh, aircraft, this is probably more something you'd be looking for. But if you're a little bit more advanced of a pilot and you want more of that scale fidelity, which is really more important to me than the 70 millimeter F-16 is by far the way to go. The scale detail on this, the, the, the quality of the retracts, everything, how it looks, it, this is the 70 millimeter is is just absolutely a, a stunning stunning airframe and it looks really good in the u.s air force thunderbird colors as well but you could always paint this to be whatever scheme uh that you want it to be you don't have to fly it as a thunderbird one 
But the one thing I do like about the Thunderbird scheme versus what I've done here with mine is uh, this is going to have a lot more visibility in the air than I'm going to have with this with the uh, Air Force uh, camouflage colors. In fact, uh, I've tried to maiden this thing a couple times and um, it was so dark and thick overcast that I decided that it's probably not a good idea to fly an airplane that's the exact same color as the clouds. Where if I had the 70 millimeter F-16 ready to go, this thing with the bright colors of the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds is going to be a lot more noticeable in the air and easy to spot, easy to orientate, um, and also just it's going to be a lot easier to fly in the air given the size and the color and visibility of the aircraft than I'm going to have with my 64 millimeter. Given the fact that I've given now the all gray um, U.S. military um, camouflage colors. Uh, that's one disadvantage of me trying to make sure everything is uh, scale correct. I tend to stick with colors that make it very camouflaged. So I'm going to go ahead and move my uh, 64 millimeter F-16 out of the way here. All right, well, we have all the pieces of the, uh, the 70 millimeter F-16 out here on the, on the table. And that really kind of wraps up the, uh, the unboxing video. Uh, there really isn't much more to do with the aircraft at this point in time besides getting the manual out and then going through the um, kind of the assembly steps. I can already see that it's similar to my 64 millimeter in the fact that we have a uh, number of components that are going to be glued into place, such as our uh, vertical and uh, horizontal stabulators. These will be glued in and the wings are going to be screwed in using um, some machine screws and the nose is magnetic and then we have the uh, the missiles that clip on to the ends of the wing. So the assembly process on this is going to be very, very, very quick and really pretty simple. There's really not a lot going on with this one. But um, that wraps up the, uh, the, uh, the unboxing video of the E-Flight 70mm F-16 uh, EDF bind and fly basic version. So if you guys got any questions on the aircraft, by all means, uh, leave them in your comments below. Um, we will not be doing a, uh, uh, an assembly video on this particular aircraft because um, this particular one here is actually a, uh, it's a, it's a customer airplane. It's one that I'm going to be doing a full complete repaint and turning it into the Arizona National Guard uh, F-16. So the Thunderbird scheme will be going away from this one and it will be completely repainted and then boxed up and then sent off. So we're not going to do an assembly video because uh, with the glued components, um, you can't unglue them to put them back in the box to, uh, to ship them out. So it's going to be completely repainted after this. And um, I'll kind of show you some videos when I get done with that process, but it will not be assembled and I will not be flying this aircraft, uh, only binding it uh, in order to um, make sure everything works and uh, extend the landing gear in order to mask around all those pieces. But it should be a very, very fun project. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go into a lot more um, prep work and kind of making sure that the paint scheme on this one is absolutely perfect. Where my 64 millimeter, I painted it in a, in a fairly big hurry. This one's going to receive a much more high quality uh, paint scheme. And it, it, looking at the aircraft, it deserves a high quality paint scheme if you're going to go ahead and change it from the US uh, Air Force Thunderbirds colors, which already looks fantastic. And I can definitely see if you're, uh, if you're big into the air show scene, uh, you could have the Air Force Thunderbirds F-16 and the Blue Angels F-18 uh, in your hangar and you'd have two absolutely gorgeous airplanes that you could play around with and kind of, if you know, even better if you can find a couple of your buddies, get matching aircraft and you can fly some, uh, some formation flights and kind of live out your, uh, your dreams of being an air show performer. But that wraps it up for the unboxing video of the E-Flight 70mm F-16 bind and fly the 70 millimeter EF version.